Hi, thanks for joining me. Recently I made quite a few videos doing challenging A-level math problems and they seem to have gone down quite well. Here is another one. We have a C, a parametric curve, where x is 3 plus 2 sine t, and y is 4 plus 2 cos 2t, where t is between 0 and 2 pi. And I've deliberately missed out parts A and parts B here, because I think if I show those, it makes this problem slightly easier. So just to keep it challenging, I've removed those bits and gone straight to part C, which I think is the interesting part. The line with equation x plus y equals k, where k is constant, intersects c at two distinct points. We want to state the range of values of k, uh, and then we want to write our answer in set notation. Do pause the video now if you want to give this problem a go, but I'm going to dive straight into a solution. So for this problem here, we see that we are taking a straight line and well, some weird parametric curve and they're intersecting at two distinct points. So given that this is an A-level problem, this is probably something to do with the discriminant. So we're going to do the kind of standard setup to begin with. But as we'll see, this problem isn't entirely about the discriminant, although it will help. So let's firstly deal with the discriminant part. Then we'll move on to what I mean by the discriminant isn't everything here. So, first things first, we're going to find the Cartesian equation of this curve. Uh, and in order to do that, well, we've got a sine t here, and we've got cos 2t here, which we can write in terms of sine t, because remember, cos 2t is the same as 1 minus 2 sine squared of t. Um, so if I make 2 sine t the subject here, we get 2, or in fact, I just make sine t the subject. Sine t is just x minus 3 over 2. And if I do something similar with y, I get y minus 4 over, or in fact, I can just keep this as y equals 4 plus 2 lots of 1 minus 2 sine squared of t, like so. And so y equals 4 plus 2 lots of 1 minus 2. Now I'm going to put this thing here squared, so x minus 3 over 2 squared, like so. Okie dokie, let's just expand this out, so 4 plus 2 minus 4 lots of x minus 3 squared over 4, because over 2 squared is over 4, and then the 4 and 4 there cancel, and so we're just left with 4 plus 2, or that's 6, minus, and then this thing here is x squared plus 6x minus 9, and so cleaning this up, minus x squared um, plus 6x, and then 6 minus 9 is minus 3. Great, so we've got this uh, Cartesian equation for our curve, and we've got x plus y equals k. Um, so if I make y the subject, that will be y equals k minus x. And we're looking for the points of intersection, so we'll set them equal to each other. And put this all on one side, we get minus x squared, or in fact, I'll bring it onto the left side. x squared plus 7x, uh, sorry, minus 7x. Uh, and then k plus 3 equals 0. And there is our quadratic equation. And because this intersects, uh, or these, these the straight line and the curve C intersect twice, this quadratic should have two re distinct real solutions. And so therefore, its discriminant should be positive. So its discriminant here is minus 7 squared minus 4 times k plus 3. And that's going to be 49 minus 12 minus 4k, which is 37 minus 4k, and we're saying that that has to be positive, so rearranging this gives us that k is less than 37 over 4. And now you might think that this is just the final answer here, but this isn't actually the final answer. What we need to also do here is consider a sketch of this curve. So in order to sketch this original curve C here, um, if I was doing this in an exam, I would probably just get my calculator to do it for me. Uh, I'd type in this parametric curve into my graphic calculator and it would spit out the answer. But just for the sake of uh, this video, we can think about how we would sketch this. And well, what we've done here is we've uh, drawn, uh, you know, we've considered this uh, parametric equation of the curve. But what we haven't done is also considered these limits here. So t is between 0 and 2 pi here. So let's think about what impact that has on x. Um, so x, oh sorry, t is between 0 and 2 pi, so that means sine is, we think about sine between 0 and 2 pi, it's attaining all its possible values between minus 1 and 1. So let's think about what the range of values of x are here. 
So the smallest that x could be is 3 plus 2 times minus 1, because the smallest sign can be is minus 1. So the smallest that x could be is 1. Let's mark that on there. And the smallest, that, oh sorry, the biggest that x could be is 5, which is maybe roughly there. Okie dokie. Now what we want to do is think about the y values here. So when x is 1, um, that's going to correspond to t being like 3 pi over 2, somewhere here. Um, so when uh, we, we have that, and so then, well, in, fact, in fact, actually, we don't need to use this uh, parametric equation before we can just use this uh, Cartesian one, which is where is it? Uh, this thing here. So y equals minus x squared plus six x minus three. Um, so you can convince yourself here that the maximum of this, oh, this is going to be a negative quadratic, so it's going to look something like that. And the maximum is going to be when x equals 3. So you can either differentiate this and set this to 0 or complete the square here. Um, but yeah, it's just going to be when x is 3, which is thankfully right in the middle there. And so this curve is going to look something like that. Um, oh, we can just check here. When x is 1, y is going to be minus 1 plus 6, which is 5, minus 3, which is 2. So that, that's 2 there. Uh, and you should get the same when you plug in 5 as well. Cool, so this is what our curve lo looks like. Um, and now uh, what, what, what happens here is when we just find the Cartesian equation of the curve, we lose this, this, this fact that x is between 1 and 5. And you might stare at this and then just draw the whole kind of quadratic like that. But of course it doesn't look like that. It's just this part here. Now, when we say k is less than 13, 37 over 4, let's think about what we did here. We said that um, we set these two equations equal to each other. I mean, brought it all to one side and looked at the discriminant. Now, when does the discriminant equal zero? Well, it's when the line and the curve are tangents to one another. So we know that when k equals 37 over 4, um, this line is going to be a tangent to this curve here. Now, what does the line x plus y equal k look like? Well, obviously, it depends on what k is, but it's going to look something like this. Uh, it's going to look something like, a, well, it's supposed to have gradient negative 1, and it might look something like this when, when k is 37 over 4, you get a tangent. What happens when you make k bigger? Well, notice that that doesn't impact the gradient of this line. The gradient stays the same. So when we make k bigger, it's just going to be another parallel line, but slightly above. What happens when we make k smaller? Well, it's going to be a, another parallel line, but slightly below. And we can see, ah, we get two solutions here. Now, when we did the algebra all the way over here and made the discriminant positive, this didn't include the fact that x is only between 1 and 5. So this took into account like the full parabola, which hopefully you can see if I make this line, you know, if I make the, grade, uh, the value of k smaller and smaller, this clearly is going to have two solutions each time somewhere here and somewhere off the off the page here. Um, so this one has a solution there and a solution there. But of course, we don't have this extended parabola, we just have the tip here. And so what we need to consider is when do we stop having two solutions? When, for what value of k does this stop having two solutions? And we can see here, the last time it will happen is when we bring the line down, 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 till it passes through this this point here. So our line would look something like that. Because if we make k even smaller than this, like whatever this value is here, you can see that we'll only, we're only going to have one solution here. We don't have the other solution, which we would have had in the extended parabola. So what we need to do here is ask ourselves, when does, uh, for what value of k does this straight line pass through that point? Well, what is that point? Well, it's 5, 2. And so we can just sub that in there. So we get 2 plus 5, or 5 plus 2, I should say equals k and so k would equal 7. So we know that if we make k any smaller than 7 this line would look something like this and would only have one point of intersection. Therefore the range of values of k, I'll just squeeze it on the bottom here, k is between 7 and 37 over 4. It can be equal to 7 um, but it cannot be equal to 37 over 4 then, it'll, then there'd only be one point of intersection. And just to write this in set notation, we would say that, you know, k is a member of the set of k, or maybe I shouldn't use k here, set of x, for which x is 
well, I'll just be a bit lazy and just write it like this. I never really know why they get you to do it in set notation. It's a bit more lengthy, but hey ho, I guess set notation is a useful tool to have. Anyway, I hope this solution has made sense. A really, really interesting problem. And I think this one, I mean, it's question 14. I believe this was the last one from this paper, uh, which is why this is extra challenging. Um, and if you're curious to which parts of the problem I admitted, um, the first part A was show that all the points on this curve satisfy this parabolic equation that we found. And then part B was to sketch the curve. Uh, so I deliberately admitted this part just to highlight the importance of sketching the curve. This would have been really, really difficult if we hadn't have sketched the curve or had a visual idea of what this curve looks like. Um, but anyway, a really nice challenging problem where we don't just want to make the discriminant positive. There's an extra layer to this problem. I hope this solution has made sense. Thanks so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Have a great day.